what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here so we're going to be talking about alien romulus in this video here today so i haven't done a video on anything related to the alien franchise in i don't think ever on my channel i am very familiar with the franchise i am just not the biggest fan of the franchise admittedly there were a lot of things going on in the horror sphere so of course the thing i was least interested in was going to be the thing i did not cover the most and that ended up being alien romulus however i have recently like you've been seeing on twitter started revisiting this franchise to get ready for alien romulus so now i'm going to talk about alien romulus since it is releasing next month and is being directed and co-written by fetty alvarez so naturally it's been a hot topic amongst the horror diehards i'm going to talk about what we know things that could potentially end up being true so if you don't want spoilers you shouldn't be watching and i'll be talking about whatever it is that we get from uh san diego comic-con as well so I wanted to do a video going over everything that could take place in the film. So like I mentioned, if you don't want potential spoilers, get the fuck out. Once I get to that point, I'll just stress up front that none of it's confirmed until the movie is released or marketing itself makes it clear. So the film is officially, and it's been reported multiple times, set between the events of Alien and Aliens. So the story concerns a group of young space colonists who, while scavenging a dere derelict space station, come face to face with the most terrifying life form in space of course that would be xenomorph one thing that is clear is that our cast of course includes kaylee spaney david johnson archie renox isabel merced spike fern and eileen Wu. now spaney is playing this character named rain one of the colonists who were leading the story a story that is reportedly set 20 years after alien while ripley is just floating away sleeping i guess she has an android brother named andy and the rest of these colonists are in are going to include characters named Tyler, Kay, Bajorn, and Navarro. So why is the film titled Romulus? Now, Alvarez explained it with this comment in an interview he gave earlier this year. He said the names Ramus and Romulus actually stem from ancient Roman mythology. They were the myth mythological or mythological creators of Rome, the largest empire the world had ever seen. As the story goes, Ramus and Romulus were twin boys who feed from a she-wolf type of creature to gain its powers. Now I'm going to get into how this connects to what has been going around online. Now, how could this connect to the first movie has actually been floating around online for some time, but I don't know how true this is. But according to AlienCovenant.com, a site dedicated to the franchise and has a history of scooping, claims that the Wayland yutani research station is called Romulus. They say we have been told that an alien Romulus we will learn that Wayland yutani did in fact recover the Xenomorph from the Nostromo incident. So I'm guessing the the one that, uh, of course, Ripley shot off the station at the end of the first film. The iconic Big Chap Xenomorph thought to be dead after it was jetsoned out of the airlock managed to survive, albeit in rough shape, and was floating in space until it was recovered and brought to the Romulus research station. From there, scientists reverse engineered its DNA and extracted the black goo material, which they then used to run their own experiments on creating their own face huggers and xenomorphs. Now, I haven't watched any of the trailers or TV spots for this film. I mean, when I say I haven't watched them, I guess that's not the appropriate comment, I should say. While I have seen them, I've only seen stuff in theaters. I have not gone out of my way to stay as up to date on this film as much as a lot of you probably have been because of the fact that again i admittedly am not a diehard fan of the alien franchise i can say that i have off the top of my head seen those first two movies three times each so this would probably be the fourth time i've watched it and also this was the first time i had even seen a director's cut i didn't even know they had a director's cut of those first two films now i'm hearing their special editions of the other entries too i'm gonna get all caught up with this franchise because i think that i have seen prometheus and alien covenant but i recall a time when i was a kid watching alien 3 and just deciding i'm not going to watch anymore because of what i'm remembering happened to ripley now that i've seen aliens i did not like what they started doing with ripley in alien 3 and how they were undoing an arc i thought was really solidified by the end of alien 2 uh i do recall alien versus predator of course who could forget that and the sequel those movies are fun i wouldn't necessarily go on my way to say they're great films or anything like that but i'm going to get all caught up with this franchise in time for alien romulus because i do plan to do a review on it on my channel i think that aliens is definitely far superior than the first movie granted 
I think that in part is because of the themes of motherhood that carry the story so well and compellingly. And that relationship between her, Ripley and Newt is just one of the most touching things to have while all of that was going on in the story. It was just a very touching aspect that really carried it and gave it the heart that I think, think you could argue was missing from the original. Fast pacing, of course, is more preferred in that sequel, but the original does, of course, have a more slow down, tension based, making you look at every aspect of this ship as quality to it that really just makes it more terrifying at times because it's the, it's playing on the fear of the unknown. Whereas Aliens, you already know about the Xenomorphs, so it's just giving you fast paced action and with a heartfelt story between mother and daughter two people who of course have lost their families and now have a chance to have a new family and they undo it in alien 3 i, re I started remembering things the minute i got done watching aliens so i'm not <laughs> looking forward to revisiting alien 3 but let's talk about what we got at sdcc so apparently at san diego comic-con fetty alvarez stressed that audiences don't need to see the other movies to understand romulus during the panel but while I appreciate that personally, I do think some level of prior knowledge should make the experience more fulfilling. That's just me. Geek Vibes Nation put out this this comment from Alvarez. He says you honor the audience when you really care. You want to give them the experience they want. When you sit in the theater, lights go off. And that's when you're like, this is going to change my life. We all keep looking for that moment. We all know that it we, we all know that. And it was really important for us to honor that. Alvarez also said this according to SFS Ma SFX magazine. It was the best experience of my career to be in the world of Ridley and Cameron, a once in a lifetime experience. Nerdless reported a new scene was shown with a chest burster. This new exclusive panel sequence reveals an intense chest bursting scene. We see a xenomorph silhouetted inside a rib cage and it slowly bursts out and emerges. And then on top of that, there are exploding spaceships and other chaos, truly suspenseful. Fetty revealed the film was shot in chronological order, so it made death scenes emotional since it meant that person will be leaving the set now, and I guess they got real close during filming. Lots of hype around staying true to the original design, going over the practical effects. So it sounds like Alien Romulus is going to end up being one of the best movies that we get this year for the horror genre, and I've been hearing that apparently Ridley Scott, who is apparently a very tough critic, gave a stamp of approval to Alien Romulus. So that makes me excited because I do still think Ridley Scott is one of the best directors that have ever worked in the industry. I just, again, am not the biggest Alien fan. I don't think they're bad movies. I do recall now, now that I've seen Aliens, I think it had to do with what they did in Alien 3 that turned me off and I didn't want to watch anymore. But you guys can let me know if you're looking forward to Alien Romulus down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications. You can miss a video in the description. I have links to all my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.